This is Leah. And this is Lena. And this is, is our, our cooking, cooking show. show. Hello everyone, we're going to be making borscht and compote. <laughs> we're going to make borscht first, and the things we're going to need are three carrots, two beets, one and a half onions, garlic, a handful of potatoes, and a half a head of cabbage. We're also going to be using um, garlic powder, onion powder, uh, sour cream, diced tomatoes, kidney beans, salt, pepper, Vegeta and one cup of water. Also, we're going to be using boiled chicken. So, after peeling the, <laughs> the, the, vegetables. Carrot, the vegetables, we're going to chop them. Show you how to chop them. We're going to uh, chop them into matchstick sizes. So, for beets, just uh, slice it across, thin layers, and then you just match six sides and chop them across like that. Alright. So that's what we're going to do for the beans. And then for the potatoes, we're going to cut them alongside. And then we're going to cut them into stew sizes. about for the carrots. For the carrots, we're also going to dice them. So you would just want to cut a few chunks off. Not dice them, but go alongside. And then, oops, sometimes it's, yeah, <laughs> go sideways like that. And cut long pieces. Uh -huh. I'm so, when they're like that, you just, again, dice them like for the beets, or not, um, go long ways. We didn't need to debone the chicken because it's really tender and it's really nice, so it fell apart, which is the perfect thing for it to do. Uh, we're just gonna take out some of the bones and just some extra skin, but it looks it's looking really good. Also, when you cook a chicken in here, um, the bones are what give it the, um, the broth because it cooks out. But if you wanted to not use, like, you want to tell them about, they can use, if they're not boiling chicken, they can use regular chicken broth? You can use chicken broth, or if you're a vegetarian, just vegetable broth, mm -hmm. vegetable, you know, like, yeah. anything. And you can leave some of the bones in there, it's not a big deal, but you just want to get some of the big stuff out. So we're all done chopping and prepping the vegetables, which is the hardest and the longest, tedious part of borscht, and the rest is just really easy. We have our chopped potatoes, our chopped beets, carrots, and onions. And the first thing that we're going to do is uh, saute the onions. There you go. Thank you. Put some olive oil, medium heat. Always want to start your vegetables off with a medium heat or a low heat, and then kind of go higher as you go along. Always uh, saute your onions first so they can caramelize because if you throw in your other vegetables along with the onions, they won't caramelize as well. Onions are greedy. They need all of their own cooking space in order to get to perfection. Otherwise, they just won't cook as well. Yeah. So, let it saute for like five to seven minutes. It should go down. They'll shrink when they saute. Um, we'll just do that. 
Uh, here's one tip for the beets. Is that you always leave half a bead out. And this actually, actually goes into the bra. Uh-huh. And it um, seeps out and makes the, the water red. Which is why, it's, which is what borscht is known for, is that red water. And these we're going to keep uh, until the onions are caramelized, and then we're just going to throw them into the, with the onions so they can cook in together and saute. Uh, all right. You throw away all the stuff from the chicken. Into the kitchen. Goodbye. And then you put the potatoes in the broth. You know, I think we need to put it on that one, I forgot. Okay, we can, we can move it. And you let it cook. When we were deboning, we turned the stove off, that way the chicken could cool down a little bit, so we just put it back on. And we're also going to put the rest of the garlic into uh, the saute when it's done. She did. She uh, cha uh, cleaned two garlic cloves. One one whole garlic clove goes into the borscht, and the other one chopped goes into the rest of the saute. Mm -hmm. So when you flip it like this, oh, it's caramelized nice. When you flip it, it actually bruises the vegetables less because when you stir it, you're you're mashing them up, so they're gonna be more blah. But when you <laughs> when you flip it like that, it just Retains the moisture, retain, retains everything better. Uh, now we're just gonna go ahead and throw the rest of the stuff in there because it's caramelized. Um, one quick tip with beets uh, they make your skin really red and they stain your skin, and they also don't wear any clothing that you yeah. like or cherish because they'll, they'll um, stain it. So, and don't use white cutting boards with beets, bad idea. I love cutting boards that are really fluffy. You can just roll it up and it goes in. There you go. And the la um, I just add the garlic in there as well. Let that sit for a little, bit, little while. The pot's getting a little too full for me to flip it, so I'm just going to stir it from here on out. You need to add water? Not yet. Okay. We're going to let it cook down for another, another five to seven minutes and then we'll um, go from there. I'm going to add two more cups of water because the broth is really strong, which is good. And I'm going to add seasoning to it. We're actually not going to use Vegeta for this soup because the broth is really nice. And when you have a really nice broth, you can opt out of this. Um, simple uh, seasonings, a little bit of onion powder. Um, a little bit of garlic powder. You already get, you're gonna have a lot of garlic powder, I mean garlic with this, so you just want to add a little bit so the broth is cooking will give it more flavor. Definitely add your pepper and salt. We added salt as the chicken started boiling, that's the number one uh, thing that we added. And we're just gonna, we're adding a little bit more. And go ahead and taste it and see if you need more or less. If you over over seasoned it, add a little bit more water to it, and you'll be fine. That's the beautiful thing about soup. If you over season something, just add a little bit of extra water. And we're gonna go ahead and turn it up to high now, or medium high, so it can start cooking out really well. Okay. And the vegetables are getting down there. They're all getting pretty mushy, sauteed, caramelizing well. Uh, just add salt to it. We're gonna add some water. We're not adding any more oil. You don't. 
Um, a lot of oil makes vegetables just taste greasy, and we don't want that. No. Uh, so just a little bit of water, let it steam out. It'll cook it faster, and at the same time, every time that you add water, it's a good time to add salt because it uh, opens every all the vegetables up, and they'll take the salt in a lot better. And we're just going to wait for that to boil down a little bit more, or fry down a little. All right. And we'll be done. And when she's doing that, I'm going to open up the cans because we're going to be adding the tomato sauce, the tomatoes in there in a second. And the kidney beans actually go inside the broth, but we're not going to do that yet, right? Not till later. When you're cutting the cabbage, make sure you put it in thin slices. You're going to be shaving it. <laughs> Just like so. <laughs> Oh, and, uh, you guys, I just added a can of tomatoes in there, and that's pretty much the last thing you're going to do. So now it's just, it's really red. I'm going to go ahead and add it to the borscht. It burned a little bit on the bottom, that's okay. These are optional kidney beans. Uh, I grew up not having them in there, but some fam um, some Russian recipes have these in there. So we'll try them. They're not bad. It's it, pretty good. It's from the can. And this looks really pretty. Super red. Look at the broth. I like that a lot. Since all of that is ready and good to go, we're just going to add the last piece of the cabbage and we're going to let that stew in there for about 5-10 ten, minutes. Ten minutes. Yep. <laughs> it's really, it's, it's uh, Borscht is a peasant dish, so I mean a lot of Russian families that aren't really rich had this because it's easy, just vegetables, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and good to go. And it's really nutritious, delicious, has a lot of vitamins in it, mm -hmm. has all your veggies, and it tastes good. And it's definitely a Russian staple. If you go to Russia or if you know anybody that's Russian, you're definitely going to have some borscht. Okay, and I'm just going to add a, a little bit more spice to it. Oh, can you make me a bowl? Yeah, you can have the one behind you. Oh, uh... What bowl? I mean, where'd the bowl go? Lots of vegetables, lots of meat. Yum. Okay. Um, you could also, what we do is add about a tablespoon of sour cream to your borscht. It makes it really creamy and really nice. I love doing that. Other people, I don't know, it just depends on your own It's taste. good either way. I really like it with sour cream. That's a Russian thing. Borscht, sour cream, bread, garlic. That's like the sides. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's All what right, we make and then next, we're going to make compote next. Oh. oh. We're making compote. How do you say compote? Compote. compote. Okay. So, we're going to need vanilla, half a cup of sugar, strawberries, raspberries, raspberries and, oh. <laughs> Freshly picked. Forever, it's from the Alaskan forest. Ooh.
<laughs> Alright, and the first thing we need to do is what? Boil water! We need to boil the water, and as we boil the water, what do we do, Elena? And you let it boil. Ah, bad idea. You don't plop it. You, you don't drop do that. it. You don't do that. What you do do. You don't do do either. <laughs> but, alright, then you. <laughs> no, we're... And then. This is the bad Just gradually idea. put it in there. And then, after she puts the last part of the raspberries in there, we're gonna put the cranberries in. The cranberries are really good. They're kind of tart, but with all... that's why you add sugar. Do we have the sugar in just now, or oh, wait. we're gonna wait? We have the sugar. You can put the sugar. In. Yeah. And you add the vanilla. One teaspoon. I'm gonna do it over this. Vanilla is optional. You don't have to add it. Some people don't. Some people just do straight berries and sugar. And uh, some people have vanilla. Like uh, us. You can also drink compote in a variety of ways. You can drink it with, uh, you can drink it cold, yes, or you can drink it hot. Uh, we drink it hot as a thing to warm up in the winter, or you can drink it as a summer drink, so it's really versatile. It's really good. And you can either strain the berries or keep them. I like to have some berry And we're gonna give it about a minute, and we'll be done. So now we're gonna turn it off, wait for it to cool down, put it in cups, and we're gonna do I'm excited. What about you, Leo? What do you think? I think it's gonna taste good. <laughs> it definitely smells really good. It does. It smells really delicious. Muy delicioso. And now we can take it to the table. Yep. Here, I'll add one more for you. Some strawberries. Hope you guys enjoyed the cooking show today of making Russian food. The portion complete. And stay tuned next week because we're going to be making my grandmother's cinnamon rolls and pumpkin spice hot chocolate. And this is Leah. This is Lena. And this, this is, is our, our cooking, cooking show. show. Uh, my lunch is welcome. God bless and good night. Porsche Hello everyone, we're going to be making Porsche <laughs> <laughs>